this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time, we're going to be looking into the sixth episode of season four of the Muppet Show, which features Linda Lynn. Now, in order to get you guys a little bit familiar with Linda Lynn, she is actually known to be an actress of television and on stage. Her most well-known role is actually playing Alice in the sitcom of the same name in the 70s, in which she actually won two Golden Globe Awards and was nominated for an Emmy. But at the same time, on Broadway, she actually is very prominent, appearing in numerous of shows, on top of having several nominations and one win at the Tony Awards, where her nominations would include Last of the Red Hood, uh, the, oh, Last of the Red Hot Lovers, sorry about that, uh, The Diary of Anne Frank, The Tale of the Angelus, uh, oh, oh, uh, sorry, uh, The Tale of the Allergist's Wife, Collected Stories, and The Lions, but she actually won her Tony Award in 1987 when she was the leading actress in Broadway Bound. And going into the episode in which she has actually appeared in, this actually has an entire theme that this is Kermit's birthday. And the entire episode is pretty much devoted to Kermit's birthday. Rather it be uh, everybody, especially Miss Piggy, organizing the show and take it out of Kermit's hands in order to have the entire episode just be commemorated to Kermit's birthday or even on stage where you do get a lot of birthday celebrations as sketches and musical numbers on top of many frog related uh, sketches and musical numbers all that encompasses Kermit the Frog and I will say that it definitely is a really well structured episode where everything fits perfectly to go into this theme that would ultimately encompass Ber uh, Kermit's birthday. However, there's just one thing, like that one tiny little element that unfortunately kind of cursed this entire episode and not make it as strong as it probably could be. Now, here's the thing. Now, let me give you a little bit of synopsis of the backstory of what's going on. Now, the plot is that Kermit is having his birthday and he didn't know about this and basically all the other Muppets are pretty much taking the show from him in order to go celebrate his birthday. However, the thing is, is that Kermit is not really for it and he wants to go and, you know, try to get the show back on his hands so it can go back into a regular show. Now, if you think about why Kermit is not really, you know, following the steps and like with what's going on with his birthday, or he doesn't seem as enthusiastic about it. If you think about it, then at that point, you might probably know what the punchline could be. And that's what really, well, not necessarily kills it, but why this episode kind of suffers a little bit is because of that obvious punchline. I mean, probably throughout the, re of the entire episode, like, you're just waiting for that little punchline to just come out for Kermit to say it, but unfortunately he has to wait until the very last minute of the episode to reveal what that punchline is. And because of that, like considering that this entire episode is pretty much like setting up for this one massive punchline at the end, it kind of falls apart a little bit. Like, you know what's coming. So, it, like because that you do have a little bit of that feeling that you're you're waiting more for that punchline to finally come out instead of just enjoying of what's currently going on. Like that's what, well, like I, I, I'm honestly trying to fight myself from saying it, that it kills it because the material that it's given, I can recognize that it's good. I can I can recognize that it's really enjoyable. I can recognize that it's really funny. It's just that little small element that, yeah, in a way it kind of, well, sort of partly ruins it, in a sense. That's why, like, I, like, this is the kind of episode I would honestly, like, really enjoy. I would really love it. But because of that little thing at the end, it's just that, like, you know it's coming, and it really screws over, 
the experience of the entire episode because let me just go down one by one of what's pretty much up with this episode like there are some good moments uh many of the musical numbers like uh there's be a frog with all the like all the character well not all the characters but mostly the animal characters coming in and like they would dress up as a frog there is a little bit of a weird thing i must say that is kind of like uh, a bit unusual and it, it kind of weirds me out is that like every single Muppet animal in there they all have the like the big Kermit eyes like with the dot and the line but they all have that like the pigs the cow and the horse and all that kind of stuff except for the frogs like the frogs themselves they have the regular Muppet eyes that is kind of weird for me uh, but then, uh, other other than that, uh, you actually got Linda Lynn and uh, the Electric Mayhem. They uh, actually make this entire ballad for Kermit's birthday with "The More I See You," and that was actually pretty entertaining. And then afterwards, uh, you do get this little moment with the Swedish Chef and Linda Lynn, where they're talking about um, this cake that the Swedish Chef made that is supposed to look like Kermit the Frog made out of chopped liver, except. Like, there are some things, like, the eyes are missing and it doesn't look green. And, in a way, it's kind of like an unofficial, uh, bit of the Swedish chef because it's not in his natural environment and he doesn't start things out with the Yimbo Shrim You know, like, that doesn't, like, he doesn't have that. So that's why I would consider it, like, an unofficial sketch. Um, other than that, there are plenty of other stuff. Like, Robin actually is very prominent. Like, he appears in Be a Frog. There is a musical number, like, completely devoted to frogs called, uh, Frog Kissin', where he would sing about, you know, if you want to kiss, you know, like, like, you haven't lived until you kiss the frog in order to meet your prince or princess, you know? Uh, and then there's another one, like, he actually was the patient for Veterinarian's Hospital. And I'm not too big of a fan because it usually encompasses bad jokes. But, with this veterinarian's hospital, considering that, like, you look into the relationship between Miss Piggy and Robin, that is actually what makes it worth it. Um, other segments, actually, like, they do a little bit of an homage of This Is Your Life, and, like, Kermit would go meet uh, a couple of people from his past. Like, he met up with his acting coach, and, uh, like, we learned the origins where Kermit actually got, yeah! Um, and another one, and this is actually really interesting, is that Kermit would actually be reunited with Wayne and Wanda back from the first season. And that's actually a pretty interesting thing, but it's also kind of weird at the same time, because technically, like, Wanda left. Because after season one, you don't really see much of Wanda anymore, but when it comes to Wayne, he is still there. It's just that... He wasn't as prominently featured. Like, in Season 1, he was a recognizable character. Like, we know about Wayne and Wanda. But then, like, once Season 2 and Season 3 came in, they still use him, and they- like, he still has a bit of that baritone, uh, actor's voice a bit that sounds a little bit like Kermit. Like, they still use that. It's like Wayne is there, but he's not as Wayne. Per se, that's the that, that's the whole thing, and they you know they talked a bit about like why Kermit would fire, like why did Kermit fire Wayne and Wanda, and uh, but one thing I will say that it is a bit surprising, and I thought like honestly I thought to myself like this would have been a little bit more interesting if they brought in Sam the Eagle because usually in season one Sam would be the one that would introduce Wayne, Wayne and Wanda, so I, I don't know what what happened like it would have been more interesting to see Sam. Uh, be reunited with Wayne and Wanda more so than them reuniting with Kermit. So that would have been pretty interesting to see. Like, I'm not saying it's bad or like a wasted opportunity. It's still pretty good. But, y you know, like, it. Nah, you know what? Screw it. No. Like, I shouldn't say anything bad. Like, there are ways to make it more interesting, but it's still good as it is. Um, other things that did happen, actually another number that I would mention here is actually the final sketch, which is Beyond the Blue Horizon, where Linda would replace Miss Piggy because she was having costume trouble. And like that, that little bit right there with Linda, Lynn, and Miss Piggy, that was actually a lot of fun. And then you got Beyond the Blue Horizon, where all the Muppets would come together, and like you got this giant cake, and like they're ju just pushing Kermit to be on top of that cake, and that was actually a lot of fun to watch, so, uh, that was actually, you know, it was, it was nice, but it's kind of like your standard, like, 
birthday style musical number in a sense. But there is one number, I must say, that surprisingly really does stand out. And it's it's like a moment where we kind of take a break from all the birthday shenanigans. Well, not necessarily, because this does relate a bit to birthdays and stuff like that. But it's more of a calming tone. It's a more heartwarming tone. And surprisingly enough, this actually comes from Statler and Waldorf. And keep in mind, it's very, very rare that Statler and Waldorf would actually have their moment of a musical number. And plus the fact that they would be, like, it's very rare, you know, that they would have their moment to shine. Because usually, like, they would just be commenting on, like, how was that, you know, like, how was that little bit? Oh, it sucks. You know, you know they, like, they would usually do that shtick. But it's very rare that they would have, like, a moment... Uh, where we see them have a prominent time to present themselves. Like, they can have backstories, but not, like, a full-on musical number. That is actually very rare. And with this one, this is probably one of the biggest highlights of Statler and Waldorf of the entire series. It's when they were singing, uh, It Was a Very Good Year. And it was definitely heartwarming, where we see a little bit of their past, you know, reminiscing all the good years. And, like, wow, it honestly really is shocking, where... Like, out of all the Muppets, Statler and Waldorf is capable to pull on your heartstrings. You know, I, I, it's honestly very sweet, and it does connect very well to the birthday thing. And, you know, it was very, very nice. So, like, yeah, like, that's probably my highlight of this episode, surprisingly. So I would say that, overall, this could have been a wonderful episode. This could have been a fantastic, like... Kermit birthday spectacular. It is extremely well structured. Everything is intact. Um, like the the funny bits are hilarious. Uh, the you know the musical numbers are well executed. It's just that last minute thing, like the little punchline at the end, because it's a little bit weak and we know it, that it's coming. It kind of suffers from the entire episode because you know what's coming. Like, it, it's kind of that little element that really does bother you a bit, and it takes you away from really enjoying the episode for what it is. And it's a bit too bad, because this could have been a phenomenal episode. This could have been absolutely fantastic, but it's just that little element that does keep it away from it. From Like, it's mostly taking this episode from being fantastic to pretty good. That, 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 that's all it is. It's still a great episode to watch. It's just that, like, because of that obvious punchline at the end, it kind of takes away from, like, the full potential that it has in order to have the audience completely enjoy it. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this episode. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And hopefully... Uh, we can still fully enjoy the rest of the episodes, hopefully without any weak punchlines. But we will only know until next time, so see you later, dudes!